What's up everyone? Another edition of A Game of Chat. Today we are going to talk about college and taxes. LSU. <coughs> uh, so Floyd, the Louisiana... Hey, uh, go what? Your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Louisiana governor has basically threatened to that LSU football will be shut down if the uh, state legislature doesn't pass a tax increase. So, so what's your what's your uh, thoughts on that? How much of a uh, what, what kind of tax increase are they um, talking about? They're saying it's the largest tax increase in state history. I mean, how much is the largest? Like, oh, man, I <laughs> let me see if I can pull up the number. I'm I'm thinking it, it's at least. Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up here. I'm trying to multitask here. Let's see. I mean, cause here here's the deal: a tax increase happens. They happen all the time. You know, even here in this state, we talk about tax increases and. And we're like, oh, we're we're we we don't want to raise taxes, and if we don't raise taxes, we can't pay for stuff. I mean, what the heck are they gonna? Ra what the heck are they trying to pay for? Well, they're 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 um, at a nine. I think it's like nine hundred and forty million dollar deficit. Oh yeah, is what's going on. Yeah. So they're they're they're. Pretty much, almost at a billion dollars for their deficit. That's not bad. Yeah. I've got, I've got not, a billion. Bad. <laughs> not bad. Uh, let's see if I can find <laughs> find the exact increase that they want. Yeah, I don't see where it says the exact percent increase. But uh, next year, they're estimated to have a two billion dollar budget shortfall. Uh, so what, what's, what's the solution for that, man? Well, apparently, um, you know, you can just keep raising taxes indefinitely. Um, apparently the solution is not to actually, you know, look at, go line by line in your budget and see where you're spending too much money and what you need to cut. Apparently the solution is just uh. to, 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 you know, make people pay more. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Why, you know. why? 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 They, why? They, I'm not, my, my whole thing is why are they? Uh, why are they? Uh, what? What's causing this, man? Like seriously? You said well, I heard something had to do with football. No, I mean, if they don't meet their budget, or if their, you know, their budget is that high, then they're going to have to close. You know, public. Um, you know, like public schools. Or, you know, it's like some schools and like parks and you know that type of stuff. You know, to make up for the budget shortfall. So one thing that's been floated out there was uh, you know LSU football being non-existent. So. I think it's hey, kind of funny. Whoa, whoa, it's it's whoa, kind whoa. of funny. It's it's funny to me that they would threaten that because you know it costs. Uh, I think I think like anywhere thirty to forty million. You know is what the football pr program spends, but it actually brings in seventy million. So you got a net profit of about you know about thirty mil. Yeah. So you're gonna cut the Can one thing that's actually making money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple things. But <laughs> You're cutting the one thing that makes. <laughs> but I, I don't think he'd actually cut it. I think it's just a bluff, really. He, he, he's trying to get it this way. People, if we don't cut the spending, uh. Well, no, no, he's not wanting to cut spending. No. <laughs> he's wanting to spend more money. You know, even though they're in a, even though they're in a, you know, huge, budget deficit. But he's want he's wanting to raise taxes, you know, so he can spend more money. So the, mm -hmm. but at the same time, not even try to solve the the problems with the budget. 
Man, man, where do you, where's all this money going, uh, Ryan? Dude, I have no idea. You know, it, I think it's hilarious to me that uh, a college can be shut down because of a, uh, you know, a budget, state budget crisis. You know, how much do they charge for tuition and they still depend on uh, taxes? Government taxes? Yeah. Uh, it's like, why am I paying taxes to fund a college that, or a university that charges, you know, Hell, I imagine LSU is probably eight grand a semester minimum to go to. Yeah. You know, why am I? Why is any of my tax dollars going to help subsidize that university? I don't know, man. For the betterment <laughs> of mankind, for the for the liberal arts, which you know, liberal arts and the humanities are important. You know, they help with they help with soft skills. Yeah, they don't they don't make any money though. People people that go into those or get those degrees. <laughs> Make no money. Don't let they spend a lot of money. They spend a lot of money, and they go into a lot of debt to get those degrees, but uh, it doesn't pay off for them. You hey, know. don't let your English teacher hear you say crap like that. You're your <laughs> teacher. Oh, uh huh. I'm sure their pocketbook says otherwise. <laughs> you know. They're gonna be like, I mean, teacher, teaching as a whole is like, a, um, is a, is the most underpaid. Uh, Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if we're talking like elementary, high school, stuff like that, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, you know, you got to think, you know, those are, you know, that's just those are government jobs, you know, private. You know, teachers that work for private schools that get compensated a lot better. I, I'll tell you a story. So, so, it, so I'm in college, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing uh, software development classes right now. I'm doing C, uh, you know, some PHP, some some CS, CSS, some HTML, uh, and our professors are people actually in the field. And they are for the for the IT professors that go to places like ITT Tech and stuff like that. Those guys they don't make a lot of money, but you know, uh, while teaching, so most of them their entire deal is during the day. During the day, they um they they go to a a private institution or not an institution, but they go to a private company. They make mm -hmm. money. On that company, and then during the afternoon, uh, that's when they are. That's that's when they are come to the class and they teach oh, the class. Dang. Yeah, you know what I mean. So they come to the class and teach the class in the afternoon, and um, and the deal with that is when they teach a class in the afternoon, uh, is that they can't make enough money to teach full time. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I have a professor. He's he's making one hundred and fifty thousand in the private field, but to the the colleges can't afford to pay a full time software development coach or teacher. I call it a coach because that's pretty much what they do. They don't tell you how to write the code. They just tell you the rules of writing the code, which is which is different. Anybody who's in software development knows that you know there's like a hundred different ways to write the same to get the same done. You know, you can yeah. do it the short way, the long way. I mean, whatever, whatever. Uh, it's one of those things that so you get it's a coach it's a software development coach so they go out in the public and they do their ah. stuff they make their big bucks and then they come back and they say hey you know what yeah I'm gonna give back so the colleges can't afford to teach people like that so 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 that's why one tuition is so high right because you're talking to somebody who can go out and be a be a chemical engineer you're gonna turn around and you're gonna want to pay him uh, fifty thousand dollars when you can go out there, you can easily make 100k plus. So I mean, when you talk about the cop teachers being underpaid, they are woefully underpaid. You're gonna sit in class and you're gonna teach a kid how to write a certain language that can pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars while you're there making fifty thousand. That makes no sense. <laughs> so the ones who come back are just the ones with you know with the big heart. They're literally just do, it's a labor of love, you know. Anybody who's doing coding, they like it because it's fun. Yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, it, it's fun. It's not some. It, it, it's 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 difficult work. It's tedious. You know, it's a lot of work. Just to uh, 
it's a lot of um, lines just to make one execution, but uh, but you know, and, and it's not just coding, man. It's like chemistry professors and you know chemists and stuff like that. They get woefully underpaid. Well, it depends on who you're talking about. If you're talking about somebody with a PhD, they're making over a hundred grand. They probably are. I mean, they, they, and, and, and you, you got to think, and you got to think they get four months off a year. They get sabbaticals. You know, some of them only work three times. You know, three days a week. You know, so there mm -hmm. are some of them that have it made. But yeah, true. <clears throat> the ones that are underpaid, why are they underpaid? When yeah, you, they're, they're, I mean, under why why are they underpaid? When you've got, you know, what they probably see sixty or more students a day. Each each student is paying, you know, really high amount for those classes. You yeah. know, why why oh, are they getting like underpaid? What are they getting underpaid for? Either to, you know, pay for you know some sports program, or or just to pay administrators tons of money. Uh, that's nothing. Some you know, the, you know, in our capitalist society. Um, here, here's the problem. It's hard to bring up capitalism when you're talking about a university, because there's not really anything <laughs> capitalistic about a university, <laughs> because it's so no, heavily I, 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 government funded, you know. I mean, it is government funded, and it is publicly. I mean, I don't know where they're getting their money from, man. My, my whole thing is that it's rolling to somebody. Like in the business world, you know, if you're a sales rep, you roll to somebody. Unless you're the owner of the business, unless you get all the final profit, you're rolling to somebody. So, so the fact that in the uh, education business, you're rolling to somebody. Somebody's being rolled for, and they can they can jack up the price as much as you want because the student loan companies are gonna guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna um, they're gonna lend you the money. They're gonna lend you a lot of money to go to school, and then you spend the rest of your life paying uh, a fifty thousand dollar year uh, loan. Yeah. Well, and you, you got to also think about you know, what role has government back loans played in the price of tuition going up dramatically? Yeah, because you make tuition more affordable or more affordable at More the available, anyways. Yeah, Not yeah more available. More affordable. But, you know, because yeah. it went from, it went from, you know, because it used to be only, you know, kids that were in poverty could qualify for a government loan, right? Well, then all of a sudden, um, you know, back 20, 30 years ago, there wasn't that high of a demand for college, right? Because you didn't need it. You know, because companies could, could, you know, basically give you an IQ Q test, you know, or, or some other type of test to test your competency, you know, to be able to do the job. Oh, you mean like the military? Yeah, exactly <laughs> like the military. Exactly like the military. Oh. So, yeah, exactly like the military. But, uh, you know, you've got, you know, interest and, you know, uh, lobbyists and stuff that, you know, weren't, weren't too happy about that. So, uh, what, what do they do? They open it up to where everybody can qualify for a government loan for college, right? And then they make it basically illegal for companies to do these competency tests, right? These IQ tests. So the only recourse that a company has really anymore to test for IQ is ding, 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 you know, a college degree, <laughs> right? But then you've got this to factor on top of it. You know, before, you know, only like 10%, you know, of, um, you know, people were going to higher education or going to college, right? You know, is basically, you know, people that were the smartest of the smart. Well, now that you have the government basically allowing everybody to get a loan to go to school, right? They also had at the same time you know, pressure universities to lower the standards to let more people in. So now you've got businesses 
that don't really have a way to test IQ other than a piece of paper or other than a diploma but now they I mean, can't they, even they, now they can't even do that because they're not sure you know because of the lo the such low standards if the person can actually do the job or not because you know there's been studies and studies where the majority of you know college students can't even read it read and write a you know 12th grade level Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna contribute to how that how that works. So we have this teacher. His name is um, I'm gonna use the word I'm gonna use John Smith, right? John Smith okay. actually sat. There. So, yeah, I'm not gonna put this teacher on blast. Yeah, yeah, right? no, he's I gotcha, gotcha. It, 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 that's actually a bad thing. So his name is John Smith. So the cool part about John Smith is that John Smith is a traditional teacher, and anybody knows what a, anybody you know knows what a traditional teacher is. That teacher, you know, come on in, grade the work, give you homework, come back, and for some reason that now is qualified as traditional. So yeah, we got some folks out there, there, and I can mention this Pearson, uh, Pearson Laboratory. I mean, they're on the radio all the time, expanding education, making it easier, accelerating the pace of learning, and what Pearson does, they are. Uh, they would charge a hundred dollars to use their software that you can only use for one semester, which is a exactly. web-based software, right? Uh, you can only use it for one semester, and it's not, re in my opinion, it's not that great of a software anyway. Because if that's the case, why do I need a teacher? You know, so they charge they charge you the software, and yeah, I mean, in some cases the software helps, but uh, you buy a book for a hundred dollars, and then you turn around and buy a, a software for another hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You're like, so, so wait a minute. So so this, this teacher, the econ teacher, he wrote the book. And the cool part about the book, there's a there's a macroeconomic class and then there's a microeconomic class. You know, mm -hmm. There used to be prerequisite macro, micro, but it is what it is. It's a, it's a book that covers both classes. It costs $60, right? It's written by one teacher. All the homework is in the book. Everything is, you literally can sit down, read the book, ask the teacher questions, and he can teach it to you. By the way, this guy is wonderful in a classroom. He's animated, he knows what he's doing, he knows what mm -hmm. he's talking about. Now, when I compared his class to another economics class, that teacher wanted to me to go out and buy, if I took her series of classes, macro and micro, I would have to spend about $400 on books and tuition, books and, books and software codes. I would have to spend about four hundred dollars. First, I would have to buy a book for a hundred dollars. Then, I would have to buy the software code for that particular class in that particular semester. Then, I would have to buy a microeconomic book. Then, I would have to buy the software code for that particular class in that particular semester. So, I mean, it's stuff like that. Not saying that the teachers aren't doing a, you know, a good job. It, it's just that. I mean, when you compare those two scenarios, I mean, which one is better for the student? The sixty thousand, the sixty dollar book, or the book and the software code that's going to cost you, uh, you know, a hundred thousand? And with that mm -hmm. software code, you know, let's say for example, you do your exam online and and, and whatnot. I mean, the traditional sit down with a piece of paper, pencil and pen test is way harder than a multiple choice online computer test. Yeah. You know, when you have to sit down and write an essay with your hand, trust me, the information is in your brain. Mm hmm Not saying that, you know, technology isn't important. I'm just saying, hey, listen, for some reason, you know, you know the material when you do it that way. That's the that's just that's just my thing. That's what, that's one of the things that are contributing to higher higher cost of education and teachers getting paid low and Louisiana losing their football scholarship. <laughs> No, no, it is. It's you know, it's just the way how things work. I mean, it's a modern type educational approach, right? Uh, with the the results uh, that are not befitting that are supposed to be somebody who's supposed to be college educated. Yeah. You know? I mean, we hear it all the time. It used to be you get a college education, you go out there, you get a job, you're fine, you're smarter than the average guy, you'll be manager in no time. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's not the case. I mean, you can't work a cell phone. I don't want you working near me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, that's my take. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, really, I mean, to to look at, to, you know, be able to see the quality of college education, all you really have to do is look at these politicians because, you know, pretty much most of these guys have done nothing but, you know, be in college, you know, especially the ones that were political science majors. But, so they're, they're, they're college educated, right? But yet they can't even balance a freaking budget. Right? Oh, yeah? All of us have to balance a budget. Yeah, you we'll, know? Be, we'll be homeless. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be homeless. But these guys that are have so much education cannot cannot seem to, you know, be able to balance a budget. Not only that, but go further into debt than their total budget at all. Yeah, I mean... Oklahoma's <laughs> supposed to be some. Oklahoma's supposed to be some sort of um, some conservative. Sort of conservative yeah, conservative yeah. state. But yeah, we we we're um we're in debt right now. Yeah, like, big time. We, we like you listen to the news. We're you know, oh crap. We're in Oklahoma, man. Oh Where god, the they're, they're fix. They're fixing to <laughs> you know. There's there's some big budget cuts coming up for you know public public schools right you know coming up soon. I mean, there's going to be some really bad cuts coming. So I mean, you know, the budget the budget is serious, but at the same time, you know, they they have this new lottery, you know, where money was supposed to go to public schools, but where is it going? You know, where are they spending that money? It's going it's going to their to the you know, the politicians' friends and stuff like that. That's where it's going. Mhm. Mm I tell you something, man. I tell you something, man. I'm not I'm not digging on anybody. Because the politics is one extreme to the other, and I feel sorry for the average Joe, because if they pay attention to this stuff, their their brains are going to be, you know, crazy, and everybody yeah. thinks they're smart, right? And here's the problem with mankind, right, and how we can solve our problems. We need to take away the fact we got we are way too cocky for our own good. <laughs> yeah, I can I can agree with that. No, no, we are way too cocky. I am not kidding you. It's not even like a joke. It's not a diss against anybody. But we are a bunch of idiots. I mean, we've <laughs> proven it time and time again. That is true. It's just, I mean, it's nature to be. I mean, we're, we're a bunch of fools. I mean, we think that, uh, well, first of all, we think that some person who, with the same size brain that we have, is better off to um, to run a nation than to and to better off, not to run the nation, but to, um, uh... Who's better off to make decisions about our own life than we are. Yeah, than yeah. you are. Yeah, I'm like, so we're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know this person. Yeah, that, this person that's, my know that's, that's my thing. That's my thing. It's like, you know, 500 politicians are supposed to know what's best for 300 million plus people. Yeah. Right. I now, how can time, how really. can 500 people be smarter than 300 million plus people? I mean, if we if, if you look at it as you know, you take United States of America as a computer, right? So, how is 300 million processors not more efficient and more powerful than 500? It can be. <laughs> It can't be. That's what I'm saying. Like we're stu we're 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 a bunch of um. I don't mean to be negative, man. We're wonderful uh, when it comes to certain stuff, like putting our faith in people. <laughs> 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 and said, "Oh yeah, I feel this guy. He's gonna be the one." I'm like, "Dear God, <laughs> are you listening to you, this person?" So this person comes along. And I'm gonna bring this up because me and you were talking about it the other day. This person comes along. This person says, "Hey, man, education's gonna be free." Right. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, I'm like, okay. All right, let me hear your plan. Um, don't worry, it's supposed to be free. You have a plan. We're gonna make it free. We'll figure it out later. And before you know it, we're losing a football team that I like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, how are you gonna make and, it free? Well, we're gonna take money. Gonna we're gonna take money from other people. Okay. So, then uh, how is that free? How is that free? Yeah. Well, uh, how, how is it free? There's nothing free. Okay, here, here, here's the next deal. We know it's not free, right? Me and you know it's not free. Um, 
what if I don't wanna what if we just cut out some of the bull crap like certain stuff let's talk about let's talk about the humanities for a while right mm -hmm. how about we cut out what how about we cut out the bull crap uh, and yeah, cause, you know, in, in 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 school, you got the humanities, you got the arts, you know, you got the sciences. I mean, stuff yeah. that I call, I, you, you know, we call them your feel good subjects. You know, yeah, the like feel good Beethoven. subjects. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to take one or two of those as gen eds, but I need to know about the. I mean, it would be nice to know about the Chinese. Um, I mean, it would be nice, but I mean, I can read that on my own. After yeah, exactly. I figured out how to how to write a C sharp a great C, how to write a code in in C sharp. You know, <laughs> I can I can figure that out. See, because that's the thing that will benefit us. You know, how can we make how can we find a better way to make sure there's no lead in our water? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it, man. If I can figure that out. I don't. I don't need to know about Beethoven or the fine arts or uh, those things are luxuries, right? Yeah, exactly. They are. They're luxuries. Well, I mean, we also got to figure out why it costs. You know, when you're when you're looking at how you're gonna, you know, spend your future. When you're looking at employment for your future. When you look and you want decide to take a degree that costs more than what you're going to make a year, you need to reevaluate your choice a little bit. Yeah. Right? Because if, if you're paying, if you're paying $50,000 for a degree that's going to pay you thirty grand a year, you might not be making the best decision. You know, why would you go into that much debt? You know, because you're never going to be able to pay off that, you're never going to be able to pay off that loan. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna be able to pay it off. I mean, you just, you just can't. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole point, you know. And I was talking to a very conservative friend of mine the other day. You know, he's saying that um, he's saying that everything should be paid for in cash, because remember I told you how stupid we are. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how stupid we are. Uh, we're stupid because he he because we don't necessarily learn until it happens to us. We don't sit there and say. Uh, you know, it happened to John, so it can happen to me. No, it's yeah, like exactly. it happened to John, but that can't happen to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what? What? I mean, John's poop is the same smell as yours. <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, you John might have had a little bit of bro broccoli this morning, and you might have had a little bit of tacos. <laughs> yours <laughs> might stink more than his does. You know what I mean? Yep. So we'll we'll see that, and the the cool part about my conversation with him, he was telling me, you know, it feels good not to have to worry about owing anybody any money. Yeah. And I'm not a huge, I, I, I mean, I'm not huge into the you know to the Bible and stuff, but he mentioned that you know, the Bible says the, the slave would be mass would be, uh, slave the slave the the debtor would be forever enslaved of the master. True. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where. Where if you owe somebody money and if you keep on owing people money, you're always you're never going to have that that's, financial freedom. Now, see that's that's why I say, you know, the Democrat Party is still the party of slavery, right? Because that example you just gave me, that you know, the slave is always going to be indebted to the master, right? Because now you gotta because your, what you gotta because explain. because what is what does the Democrats want? They want you know, more welfare, they want higher taxes, blah, 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 right? So, I mean, what have, I mean, Democrats have been essentially, you know, had, have been in power, had the majority of power, you know, a few exceptions, you know, here and there, but for the most part, for like the last, like, 50, 60 years, right, Democrats have controlled. And wh what's happened to our debt, right? It's at massive proportions. So and, and and you know besides they 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 claim to be you know the party of minorities you know and blah blah blah, but I mean no, what have I mean, what they have are. they what have what have they actually done for minorities though? I mean um, I mean the, Dem the, Dem the Democrats are they they are I'm not saying they are like the definitive 
party of the minority. That's that's not what I'm saying. They, I mean, it goes back to politics, man. I mean, you got to think about it. In order to have people passionate about your side, you have to divide the country. Exactly. And yeah. There's no better divisive divisive tool than to say them versus us. Mm -hmm. So so to divide the party or to get people on your side, you need a divisive tool. You need to you need a you, you listen to the radio or the T V station, it's it's what's the identity of this party. Yeah. Right? So it's a divisive tool. So you figure out a way to divide Peter from Billy Bob or Billy Bob from Leroy, you know, you guys are not the same, and then and then people think that you're actually fighting against each other when you really aren't. Guess what? I mean, you're just as poor as I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might live in the country, but you're just as poor as I am, and that kind of. Well, I, mean, I mean, that that's that's where it is. So when the Democrats come by and say, and I don't like to use Democrats, but when the politicians come by and say. Because I'm not going to use the word con when the Republicans, I'm not going to pick out one party. I'm going to say, when they come back and say, hey, you know what, your value is not my value. That's a divisive thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I've yet to hear a, a, a and, and, and you know what's funny? People are naturally evil. <laughs> 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 you know, no, they are. They just need this. Here's the deal. All right. So I'm not going to touch on race, but you might be. You ever been somewhere before, right, and you're chilling, and you're just like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then you see something happen, and you're like, this mother. <laughs> you know, but you don't say it. You know why you don't say it? Not because you're not, not because you're not evil, but because it's incorrect to say. Or the new thing they got going out these days, politically incorrect. Uh -huh. Right? So people as, as a whole are generally uh, uh, evil. So... You know, I wouldn't. It, I wouldn't say people are evil. <laughs> oh yes, they are. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're, no, no. We're some evil. We're some evil people. We are <laughs> evil at I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm gonna stick by that because I, I know it for a fact. And the only reason why, you see, because it's, it's it's taboo. It's taboo not to be. Uh, uh, it's taboo to be. Um, I'm not kidding, man. It's taboo to be to have an evil opinion or to have evil thoughts. Right? Because, okay. It's kind of like how, what happened with, with, with all the, um, the terrorist activity, you know, the other day, right? All of a sudden, people are angry. So now they want to do angry stuff. They want to get angry people. So they just want one person to come out and say, you know, screw everybody and screw this and evil that and they just need because if more people think evilly or if more people think the same way then all of a sudden people start thinking that it's okay to think that way it's kind of like in slavery or in the um or the holocaust more people thought at that time that it was okay to do that so therefore they did it <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's my opinion. I'm not saying no, no, no. As time goes on, as we grow as humans as a race and everything else, we kind of figure that hey, <laughs> that's not really a good idea. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? That's not really a good idea. We can't put uh, a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of NBA players on a boat and not pay them for a few hundred years. <laughs> we can't. You gotta remember <laughs> there there was more than just remember there was there was. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> Welch and Irish, you know, being a denture yeah, servant. Yeah, yeah. Servants, true. Yeah, I mean, I, li I like how you say denture servants. I like how you didn't go by the point and say they were actually slaves. <laughs> well, I mean, some of them were, but most of them, for the most part, were denture server servants. You know, because, and they had their, you know, England at the time had a high prison population, so they just, you know, put a lot of prisoners on boats and sent them over there as. You know, but but I get I get I guess what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not going to do it. With, it's not it's not about. I'm not here to talk about slavery. I'm here to talk about hey how at, until things get naturally corrected by intelligence and by logic and you know and we we take uh, we take religion out of the the frontal point of the whole thing. We uh, uh, we as a whole 
would allow almost anything to happen if the majority said it's okay. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Because I mean... when uh, when when the Jews got murdered, right, there was a bunch of people there that didn't say anything or do anything. You know what I'm saying? The that's why I said we people are naturally evil until some until it's the crowd effect, the mob effect, per se. One person says, "Let's let's burn down the house." You know, and everybody in the mob like, okay, cool. Like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, do not burn down the house. That is the wrong thing to do. So, I mean, it's the same thing with, uh, you know, when when the, when the one party says, uh, these people suck. Oh, well, guess what? If I get enough people to think that those people suck, guess what? It's normal to say bad things about the other person <laughs> or to do bad things towards the other person because we have multiple people doing so. If that if that was one guy like Gandhi, ex uh, Dr. King, uh, you know Nelson Mandela, I mean those those guys would say, hey man, it's not okay for us to take this path. It's not it's not cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not cool. It's not just those guys. I mean, there's a bunch of guys in the path that'd be like, hey, you know what? That's why we got geniuses such as Einstein. You know, because he thought differently from everybody else. And that's why they're geniuses. And yeah. That's why people are naturally evil. Those are the geniuses. <laughs> so when you, I, mean, when, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, he knows. Like it's kind of like me and you right now, man. We're here uh, playing video games. Why aren't we out there? Uh, I, I don't know. Doing something more productive to to life. I mean, I hope we are. I hope we're helping somebody to understand that they're an evil son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they need to watch out. They need to watch their watch how they uh, treat others. And not because somebody said something bad about, no matter who they are, no matter what they stand for. Because I get it. You know, what's it? I get it. You know, we might be passionate about certain things, but but sometimes we need to check back and realize, hey man, is what I'm, is it really right? I mean, who defines morality? I mean, is it the church? Is it the politician that says, hey, uh, you know, we need to borrow more money and take your money so I can shut down this football team. I mean, what about those football players? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can tie it right all back into selfishness and just complete evilness, dude. That's all it is. Well, I mean, here, here's, here's the thing. Is it moral for, you know, a government or people in the government to you know, take your money at all, right? To forcibly take your money. I mean, <clears throat> you know, they want to talk about moral high ground, but what is what is government other than people with guns, right? I don't know. Because if, 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 if you if you look if you look if you look at it, I mean, the government is nothing but an opinion with a gun, right? Oh I mean, yeah. And whoever has so, the gun wins. I mean, exactly. So, I mean, there's nothing voluntary about government. There's nothing voluntary about taxes. Right? I mean, yeah. So when people, it, it, when, people are, when people are like, I pay my taxes. Yeah, everybody does because they have to. Right? <laughs> it's not something that you just voluntarily choose to be patriotic. It's something that gets taken out of your check before you see it. Yeah, and if you like don't, you you and if you don't, you will go to jail, or you will have guns pointed at you for not complying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, here's the here here here's the deal, dude. People come and say, "Hey, man, I pay my taxes." You're right. They don't have a choice but to say they pay their taxes. But the other guy that you're telling that you pay your taxes to also paid his taxes. Yeah, exactly. A, yeah, yeah. So don't pretend like the guy next to you didn't pay his taxes. So. And, and don't pretend like the it, 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 it's majority rule, right? It is. It's it, majority yeah, rule. Yeah. It, it, some people say people, some people say mob rule. Yeah, it, 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 that's the mob mentality. Remember, let's well, burn and, down his house. And, okay. <laughs> and a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, when they because here's here's how good of education people get. Here's an example, because people people think that this country is just a democracy. It's not. Not not a democracy, right? No, we're, 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 a, we're all freaking tyrants, a, dude. It's a <laughs> constitutional republic. 
Right. Hey, man. Remember, remember when we said we're going to do the show, how you're not going to use big words? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's not, str it's not straight, pure democracy. It's, you know, we elect officials that, you know, represent us, blah, blah, blah. You know. Because he... he you know, people think it's just straight up democracy, and it, it, it's not, because because you know they knew that pure democracy really doesn't work. Because when you have pure democracy, the masses will always, um, you know, pass laws or make things unfavorable to the minority. Right? That's what happens. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with you know. Slavery, that's what happened with Jim Crow. You know, hey man, that type leave, of leave stuff. Black, leave, leave black people out of this. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> Japanese internment camps. You mm -hmm. know, you know, you could go on and on about, you know, the different different types of stuff. But that, oh, yeah. that's or, what or, happens or, when, or, you, or, when you have straight, you know, a pure democracy is, you know, mob rule. So they will always, they will always you know, take the rights from the minority. I mean, and... Because it, 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 and, 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 they're going to yeah, vote, they're going to vote in their favor. Right? They're going to yeah, vote. I mean, it's, re it's really gonna rule, dude. I mean, because we... I mean, not we, because I wasn't a part of it. Y'all did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Y'all did it. Y'all came to this country and be like, hey, man, you're natives, yo, we got this. This is mine. All yeah. Right? They did. They're like, all right, all right, cool. We're gonna give you some. No, we want it all. Right. We wanted everything. Alan, uh, Andrew Jackson was like, yo, you don't have a choice, man. This is how it's going down. Right. You go move out, or we gonna kill you. All right. You know why? Cause I got the bigger gun. Y'all have sticks. And True. I got a gun. All right. Then they moved out, and they're like, and even when they moved out, they're like, they moved so far. And then eventually what happened was the Trail of Tears. And then eventually what happened was the tragedy was so big that the government had to do something for those folks. Yeah. Right? Now, we can't sit here and pretend like the bigger gun doesn't always win. Right? If you look back at history, the bigger gun always wins. The problem is the bigger guns always make big enemies. That's sure. the problem. So, so that's why. And there's uh, always unintended con consequences. Yeah, the, the the fallacy of I don't know what they call that economic fallacy, but it's something in there, and I don't remember how. But you know, unintended. Co yeah, that's 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 that's, that's 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 exactly it. All I'm saying is that people can't pretend to take the moral ground all the way, but what they pretend is that the moral ground or the or the evil that they're doing. Is um is 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 right is is correct yeah it's not evil they 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 always we 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 always do that and, and I'm pretty sure you do it too think about it you do it you do it all the time you do it all the time you what just, I do you just don't yeah I mean you do it I mean you do it all the time dude like you ever had sex before marriage yes. <laughs> well, you're a damn 40k. That's what you are. True. <laughs> I want to hear that. I mean, you ever gambled before? Yep. You gamble. You ever told a lie I gam before? I gamble my life every time I, I drive on the highway. You're telling me that he's freaking up a home of roads. <laughs> that I pay damn taxes for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I always end yeah. up paying tons of money to the state for them not to fix the roads. But let me get this right. I pay you money to fix the road. That's another thing. I pay you money to fix the road just so I can fix my car. Yeah, just so I can, you know, replace <laughs> tires when I don't really, when I shouldn't really have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's my deal, dude. That's my deal. It is time for us to stop pretending that what we're doing is correct, right? Uh, people would rather us lie to them, right? People want yeah, people to, they, people they don't want to hear the hear truth. Them. I mean, no, they they don't. I mean, the no. truth is, uh, I mean, the truth is, we're evil. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear that they're evil. That, that sucks. I mean, it's a sad day when you realize that you're an evil person. <laughs> it is. 
And you cannot argue with me that you're not evil, because you're gonna argue with me. Hell and um, hell and high water. I that you're. I would. Cool. I wouldn't say evil. I would say people are naturally selfish. No, right? I won't say evil people, because <laughs> I'm not gonna say evil because I, because a lot of people. Um, you know, do people do selfless stuff every day? Selfless acts because every day. they did because they did evil yesterday. <laughs> so they're like, how can I make how can I make up the fact that I just cheated on my girlfriend? Oh, let me go let me go buy her some flowers. How can I make up oh, the God. fact that you know I I didn't uh, I didn't let that I didn't take that old lady's bag from 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 the uh, from the shopping cart. To her car for her, and I sat there and I watched her struggle in the rain. You know what? Let me let me let this one old lady pass. People, people pretend that they're good. We, <laughs> it's a feel-good nation. It, again, it's a humanitarian subject, right? The good of people is a feel-good fact. People are not good. Here's the deal. Weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, I mean, we thought we were doing something good. I mean, the American public was for it. But well, it, yeah. <laughs> The media had a big part on that one. You know, they basically did no vetting. Right. Because the media, because man, they are just as blood hungry as politicians are. I mean, they are bloodthirsty. But, I mean, that, 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 that's the whole deal, dude. Like, okay, all right. Let's let's do an experiment. You tell me, uh, you tell me one why why people are good, and I'll tell you four reasons or two reasons why they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> that's two. That's two. Um, sure, I'll give you I'll give you a good one. They don't. <laughs> well, I gotta say that with uh, with slight exceptions. I mean, just look at how people raise their kids. Okay. I don't get it. Well, I mean, just, you know, any parent, right? Any parent is, once they have a child, they could care less about their own well-being, right? I mean, yeah, because, I mean, that's, the, that's, that's a selfish trait. What about the neighbor's children? <laughs> <laughs> because they're a part of you. You're, now, you, now, you have no choice but to. <laughs> how, how, is it like to how, is, how is it selfish to... You know, why should you have to care about somebody else? Uh, oh, you know, dear, you no, 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 no. <laughs> like, why, why, is it, why is it selfish um, for you to care more no. about yourself than somebody else? No, 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 that's not what you said. Yeah. You corrected what you just said. But you well, said I was saying what I meant. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, re I was correcting what I actually meant. <laughs> See, you said it again. <laughs> it is amazing how you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. He's like, uh oh, Floyd's right. Let me backtrack here. Wait, wait. <laughs> I don't think this is where I want to go. <laughs> Why should I care about anybody else? I'm like, wow. Yep. I'm so glad Ryan's on board. He's finally catching up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some would argue that Andrew Jackson is the greatest president in the United States. Right? Why? I, I would say, you know, Andrew Jackson was one of the few presidents that was actually, you know, not an elite, right? You know, he was more, you know, kind of every everyday guy, um, you know, really tough as nails. And he actually was not afraid to take on special interests, right? He, he well, yeah. wasn't, he, yeah. he knew, he knew that a central bank causes debt, right? He knew that you know, the government should print its own money and not a private institution. He knew if it, he knew he wouldn't make America great, great 
<laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> American great. <laughs> he well, I mean, he did. Great if he, he did things he that he knew were not going to be politically favorable for the for the better oh, yeah. of the country, right? Trail of tears. Trail of tears. Yes. Now that is I. You know, every time I talk about Jackson, I hate to have to talk about the Trail of Tears. You know, because I, pers I personally thing. like Jackson, even though I am Choctaw. <laughs> but... Oh, I don't hear that. It's like, it's like me saying, I, I like the people who came and got me down in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, you were they didn't come and get you because you were born in Jamaica. Don't care. <laughs> 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 and and it's probably a higher probability that it was you know someone from you know your own your own people that sold you to those Europeans. I mean, it's a high probability, but you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is that I'm not going to say that. Okay. In the grand scheme of things, right, we wouldn't have football. We'd be talking about LSU losing their football team because we raised taxes. Because we wouldn't have America because America wouldn't have been there without five hundred five without six million people going to the gym yeah. for five hundred. I mean, and it's just like right. you know, it's 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 like you know, you know, we wouldn't have a great railroad system today if it wasn't for the, you know, the Japanese people or the Chinese that were, you know, they weren't really slaves, but they were pretty damn close to being slaves. You know, they were treated really what, horribly man. to build them railroads. I mean, but the, 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 whole, the whole thing is, right, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, the whole thing is, uh, everybody views something differently, right? So when I say, you know, Andrew Jackson's evil, I mean, human beings in general are evil, I mean, if, if you look at the good and the bad, the people forget the bad real quick, and the people don't even remember the good. Or the so-called good that we tend to pretend like we do every now every now and then. Uh, I mean, we forget all those stuff and then we move on to the next big thing, you know, like Samsung Galaxy S7 or some crap like that. <laughs> and we care more about that, and we care about the Grammy than somebody, some, you know. Well, exactly. Some, some... <laughs> the Grammys cracked me up. Was it, no, it was the, it was, yeah. it was the Oscars. That big deal. Yeah. I'm like. Well, what was the big deal? You know, because they said there was, you know, it was all white people or whatever. I mean, it's true, which, but which I, I mean, didn't. It, I, I, I mean, don't watch. I don't watch it anyways because I don't really care about, you know. But I'm. But I'm like about that's a bunch what you're of actors. A big deal out of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I don't really care about a bunch of actors giving themselves awards. You know, who cares? Yeah. But I mean, uh, a bunch of actors. It, I mean, my my thing with that is, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's kind of funny because they're like, oh, there, you know, there's. You know, there's not enough, you know, black people. Or there's not any black people that are getting these awards, and I'm like, I'm like, who cares? There's, what, uh, how many white people get an award? You know, at the BET award. At, at the BET or the NBA, you know. <laughs> oh, you can't use the you can't use the NBA, bro. Sure, I can. can't jump. Nah, nah, you guys don't jump. That, not that, a three pointer award. That's my whole point. That's my whole point. Because those awards are going to the people that were the best, right? Yeah, yeah. I would. The the yeah uh, yeah exactly. Yeah, I could see that. It's going, it's so, going to the people who think they're the best. Here, here, here's 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 my deal, dude. Guys work all their lives just to get accepted by their their so-called peers, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Sometimes I think. People are too quick to call foul. Now, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. There is some some prejudice out there, right? You know, people don't like people with red hair. They don't like people from you know from different countries. You know, from different situations. I don't uh, talk about people with some, red hair. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, the the whole the whole the whole deal is the whole deal is right. I was sitting down in the office the other day. I think I don't know if it was me and you, and we were talking about. Uh, Brown Nappy College and all these black colleges and stuff like that. I mean, and I thought to myself, why the heck do we have colleges like that? We had to go through the whole desegregation crap just to come, just to come do it again. Just you know, to segregate. Desegregation crap. Yeah, that's the segregation. When I say desegregation crap, I don't mean like 
uh, D three occasion trap of this that that whole thing was a bad thing. It was a wonderful thing because we needed we needed that back in the sixties. Thank you very much, all the people who died and got lynched for that crap. And you know Malcolm X and you know mm -hmm. Martin Luther and yeah, enough love to the guys who did the peaceful stuff. So I'm not saying desegregation or the desegregation was a bad thing. What I'm saying is that we've been through that heartache. So why segregate yourself again? Why separate exactly. them versus us? So we talked about people are naturally evil because we're separating ourselves. We don't need to separate ourselves. I got a girlfriend, right? And her, and every time I'm like, I know it's something stupid uh, that has to do something to do with the race of a person, you know, whether it be black, Asian, Chinese, you know, Hispanic, you know, whatever. Uh, she says, I honestly didn't notice that. I don't see color. And I mean, I've been with her for a while. And you know what? I believe her. She yeah. doesn't see color. She yeah. does, I mean, there's, peop there's people out there like that. Mm -hmm. now, don't, get, don't get me wrong. She'll turn around and she'll be like, that son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a perfect example. I remember, and this has been some month, months back, but I remember this story about this family who was, you know, the principal, uh, you know, basically kicked them out of their their child's graduation and then called the police on them because they were, you know, they were screaming and hollering and clapping for their, you know, their child that had just graduated like most people do, right? Yeah. So, you know, I heard about it, you know, on our, you know, the news station me and you listen to quite quite often, you know, the conservative one, right? And they were like, yeah, this family and such and such, blah, 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 was kicked out, you know, da, 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 da. And they never once mentioned race, right? They never once mentioned race. But that story got me and tons of other people very angry about it, right? Like, where does Why? the principal get off, you know, calling the police on, you know, you know, somebody that's proud of their kids, right? So, so people were mad, mad about that. Well, then I watch, you know, because I watch several different YouTube channels. So I watch, you know, this uh, YouTube channel that is, you know, you would say they were on the left or they're very liberal, right? Their title and their whole conversation was this black family, this black family, this black family, blah, blah, blah. They made it completely about race, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't need to make it about race because we're, people were mad because they were just mistreated as human beings. Yeah. I mean, now, I would see, it, 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 especially now, in, in this case, right, I like the way how it was presented as long as we presented it correctly. Now it's not because what they're doing. Cause they're, if it's good news, nobody cares, right? If it's neutral news, nobody cares. If it has the negative light on it, right? If they have a controversial figure on it, if it's something that will cause the ratings to go up, yeah, that that's what people care about now, right? So, I mean, that's what they care about now. So that's what they're gonna do. Be oh, I got a call. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Better tell them you're live. Hello? Yeah, they're trying to give it to buy something again. I'll tell you what I bought. I have I bought <laughs> myself. I have faith in my freaking self. I'm a wonderful human being. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I mean, here here's the deal. I mean, and it, and it goes out to our media. I'm gonna say the liberal media did a pretty a better job of it, of dividing people by causing a stir. Because right now people are sensitive because of this whole. You know, it started with Trayvon and it goes down mm -hmm. to what's that out of place? What what's that out of place? Ferguson. Um, Ferguson. And in those cases, hey, hey, I'm the last person to say that that kid deserved to get shot or. You know, that guy deserved to get killed, and these circumstances are different. And cops do treat minorities with a, with a negative um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to doubt that. But but I, media, I would go to it, say they it, treat it, they treat everybody terrible, but I'm not. I'm not going to say they don't treat minorities bad, but I. But I'm going to throw in there they treat everybody pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they do. They do. They do. And as a minority myself, man, I'm like, I haven't been. To be honest with you, I haven't been treated, or I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity to be treated, uh, in a negative light. I haven't had that opportunity yet to be. As a matter of fact, no. I take it back. I have one. Um, about probably six or seven years ago. I was in uh, South Carolina, uh, you know, in the, no, Georgia, right outside of Georgia, in the suburbs of Georgia. And I was coming from a bad neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was driving an Infiniti G35, you know, 2004 model, supercar, you know, 300 horsepower, the thing was amazing. Uh, uh, I was a little bit younger at the time, so of course, a lot of stuff didn't register, like why is he poking a flashlight in the back of my car? Yeah. Stuff like that. But he went ahead, he did that, no big deal. I didn't have anything to hide, so I didn't act suspiciously. I was leaving the neighborhood, I got pulled over, I'm like, why is he pulling me over? He's like, I saw you swerve, and I'm like, I was looking at my phone, putting in my navigation to find where I was going. It was like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah, so there was one cop there talking to me, trying to see if I was either intoxicated or doing a drug deal, and another cop on the other side of my car, poking a flashlight in my back seat. Now, yeah. Two things I could have taken from that. One, I'm like, well, well, guess what, man? I ain't doing nothing. I'm fine. I'm, you know, everything's straight. I, I don't have any drugs, and, I'm, and I wasn't speeding. I only swerved for a little bit because I had my phone in my hand. I had an iPhone 4 at the time. Right? So I swerved a little bit because I had a phone, and I was putting in the address for the navigation. I mean, that, that's a for the whole law. So I thought about it. I didn't think about it as a bad thing, but what I did think about it as, now to think about it, well, mm -hmm. I was, I don't know if they were treated anybody who didn't live in that neighborhood the same way. Right? I, I was you. in yeah. the neighborhood, I was, a, I was a visiting, and I thought I was going to break it down to skin color, because I don't think it was. I don't think it was the neighborhood I was in. They're like, okay, cool, let's just, you know, let's, 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 let's start checking out this guy's back feet. So that, that, to me, had nothing to do with color. That mm -hmm. had something to do with, you know, the neighborhood. Now... Black people are just happen to be in those neighborhoods. Yeah. And Hispanics are, are just happen to be in those neighborhoods. Right? And mm -hmm. poor people who can't articulate themselves better just happen to be in those neighborhoods. Yeah. So the cops who are used to bad things happening in those neighborhoods are going to react differently. Now, if you ask me, no person on this planet should be treated with any sort of disrespect no matter what neighborhood they live in, whether it be Beverly Hills or West Side Story in the project somewhere. Yeah. That's the problem. They affiliate bad behavior with minorities and people uh, who, who don't have as much money as, as regular folks. That's the problem. Yeah. So, of course, so, so the statement, hey, you know what, I think cops treat minorities differently. Of course it's true, because minorities tend to be in the lesser neighborhoods. Now, uh, I mean, it's not a black statement. It can't be a black statement. Every cop is different. Cops, as a general, are good people. You know, I'm pretty sure when they come on the force, they're like, oh, cool, you know, I'm going to make a difference in society and all that stuff. And, you know, and they really want to make a difference in society, and that's the point, and that's how we should treat them. But they really need to realize that after a while, the stuff that they have in their back mind based on what happened to everybody else can affect the way how they act towards everybody else. True. So they might see something happen to John, his partner down the street. Of course he's going to come at somebody more hostile because he saw what happened to John. He's trying to get home. Yeah. He's trying to get home. Of course if we got 90% um, of the prison population African American or 60% or whatever percentage he's going to be looking for a criminal with that skin color. And believe it or not, even though we're saying, hey man, you don't have to uh, define uh, a criminal by a skin color, in his mind, he's subconsciously doing that. Yeah. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> he, he know he shouldn't, and he doesn't. You know he doesn't have to, but it, it just happened to him in the past so many times. He doesn't have a choice. 
So it, it's not going to be fixed overnight. It's going to take generations to be fixed. Yeah. Generations until until the stigma goes away. And it works the same thing with 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 other minorities towards the Caucasian population. It does because uh, yeah, I work in a cell phone store, and um, and I've seen you know I can't tell you what cell phone I work in, but I work in a cell phone store. Why is it that uh, when when a customer walks in, they take a scope around the room and then they go to the person they're going to feel more comfortable with? Yeah. Why is it that an Hispanic guy or African American guy, oh, anybody speaking Spanish? I mean, you you're speaking English. Don't yeah. Tell me you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And don't, don't don't give me that crap. <laughs> yeah. That that's the well, point. I mean, that's it's like you know, that's like you know, a lot of times you know when somebody's black comes in to the store, you know, they're yeah. gonna, they're going to come to you, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm they, white. I don't care what you're talking about. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you, you're 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 a toasted marshmallow. <laughs> toasted marshmallow. Ooh. Sexy. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and, on and first hope, first uh, appearance, they're gonna go. You know, they're gonna go to you. You know, because they oh, think. Oh, you go to this guy real quick. Yeah, because I mean, logically, they're like, you know, this guy's gonna, you know, not try to screw me over. You know, because we're the <laughs> same. They have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that, and, that, and that's what we're trying to get around with. That's what that's what we're trying to get around with. That that that's what we mean by, you know, the separation. That that's what we mean by, uh, you know, uh, people defining themselves as is them versus us because if politicians want to vote they do that right the reason why um now 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 when people make make that you know initial decision just based on looks right and they're like you know you're busy you know say back in the day when i was out there with you you know they would uh you know just wind up with me right Mm-hmm. you know and they're like oh god we're you. Yeah, I mean, once once they hear me talk, and once I talk to them, they're like, "Oh man, you know, this guy's this just guy's an old cool. this ju- this guy's just an old country boy, you know." Just a good old boy. <laughs> yeah, just a good old boy. You yeah. know, next thing you know, they're only coming to me every time they come into the store. And I and I have people the same same thing, man. I've had people the same way. It's Floyd in, or you know, it's Floyd in. Yeah, man, what's up? Yep. So, I mean, we can't we can't pretend like it's not not a problem. It's the initial reaction, you know. It's the re- initial reaction. I'm pretty sure that sometimes you meet some people and they're like, yeah, they're nice. They're just rough around the edges. Of course, they're rough around the edges. You haven't smoothed them out yet. Figure out what's going on. <laughs> 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 like, of course, you know. So, I mean, I don't want to. I don't. I mean, and that and that's the natural hate that I'm talking about. People are just, you know evil by nature you know well it's uh, not i don't i don't necessarily say it's evil it's just you know people feel more you know subconsciously feel more comfortable with what they know right subconsciously yeah subconsciously they just go with what they know and, you, and it's not even necessarily you know you know a race thing it could be just a cultural thing you know like yep. people that are you know that are country you know, when they get around a bunch of urban people, they're going to feel more comfortable with, you know, country people. It's just, you know, for the most part, you know, there's exceptions. People don't, like me, I don't care. Like, I, I, I can get along, hang out with anybody, you know. But not, I know you know. can. And I wasn't always like that way either, you know. I used to be, you know, super, super, you know, anxious and had real bad, bad anxiety problems, you know, and stuff like that. And, and, but, un- until you met me and, and I opened up your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna say it happened a little before that, but uh, you know, I eventually, you know, worked all that stuff out. You know, I was always. But uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it's. I'm not gonna say it's necessarily a bad thing for people to, you know, to to feel that way. You know, there's nothing. There, for me, there, there's nothing really inherently wrong for people to. You know, want to gravitate towards what they know or what they feel more comfortable with. Nothing wrong with that. 
Yeah, it's not around somebody learning about other cultures. I'll put it that way. But it, but yeah, you know, it, it it's that thing. It's kind of like that child and his mother. Uh, you know, when they had that tender year to two, when they're learning about stranger danger and all that stuff, and you know, they're not a baby anymore. Guess what? They don't. You know, they their mind works in a way that it kind of help. Uh, kind of help tell them, hey, you know, this this is not uh, correct, or I'm not used to this. Yeah. Yeah. That is just one of those things. Boy, we went way off topic. I don't know how we ended up on... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how my topic is, man. My topic's fine. I talk about <laughs> life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The American dream and making America white again. Oh, uh, I mean, sorry, great again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, 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 that's my flow, bro. So... Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> so while we're on here, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the million dollar question here. What? Uh, what is your feelings as a black guy on Trump? The guy's an idiot. No, no, <laughs> no, let me take that back. I'm sorry. I can't say he's an idiot. He is the most divisive figure. Not not speaking from an African American perspective, but he's the most divisive figure out there. I think okay. that he has, so he has tapped, in, he has tapped you, into... You think he's more divisive part. than Obama is? See, it, it's different because Obama... I'm not going to say Obama is... No, yeah, yeah, I guess I would say that. I think Obama could do a better job of, of race relations, to be honest with you. That's my... That's my you know, I, I know, but he's, he's really. had his chance, though, and it... It, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. No. It, it crumbled under him. Crumble under him, but um, in, I mean, any 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 any, any uh, honest person can tell you that. Uh, I mean, he did did good with you know with certain stuff. I mean, bringing down the numbers. But anybody who studied economy know that uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, if if you look at you know, if you if you know, if you know economy, minority you know that, you know minority that. unemployment, it's worse. Yeah, minority unemployment is worse because you know. Uh, Social services are up. I mean, of course you got that stuff, but I think Obama, not Obama, I think Trump is more dangerous uh, to America. Uh, you know, and I think he's more dangerous. And I'm not a Republican, and I'm not, not a Democrat, but I think he's more dangerous to the Republican brand of uh, conservatism or whatever they, you know, or in Christian values and. Than, than, than anybody else out there. That that's my belief. So you uh, think he's I think, think he's a dan danger to the Republican Party? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. He's he's definitely a danger to the Republican Party. Now, now, the Republican Party is a danger to themselves at times uh, with some of the stuff they've said in the past by alienating people instead of including them. And they, they I mean, you know, but. If the Republican Party alienates it, the Democrat comes back and says, hey, see, see, they're mm -hmm. not with us. See, yeah. so that nobody really, they, I mean, it's, it's their job. I mean, it's, it's what they do. They're not with us. That's the whole thing. They, they come around and say, see, the, Repu the Democrats, the, the, the Republicans aren't with us. Yeah. So they still have, they, they, they still, instead of including, they're still like dividing stuff, you know, they, they're, uh, so, you, so, so I would say, he needs to be nowhere near the presidency. <laughs> Not even in cabinet now, or whatever. Now, wh why why do you think he is more unfit than anybody else? I mean, specific reason uh, why? Uh, it's, I don't see him as a uniter. That's that's the whole thing. I mean, we we sat here, we just talked for an hour about about people who divide people. That's that's the only reason. Not now, he might be a great businessman. He might he, he might even be good for the economy. He he might even you know be good at making deals. But you can't talk about a certain group of people the way he did. Wait, you know what, and, what certain and, group? And he, what he, certain group are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about folks who were Muslim. You can't talk about Muslims like that. You can't you can't talk about. I mean, uh, hard he, what, what did he wait, what did he wait. say specifically about him? Other than I we, mean, sh other than we should just suspend, you know, the immigration right now. Okay, so 
Here, because what he's saying we should suspend the immigration, people are saying we should, uh, we should not let them in. Well, that, I mean, that's people, that's not what he's saying. Yeah, but that's what he feels, right? When the Fed, when, let, the, when the chairman... Of the, let the, me the, give you just finish. a, let me give, no, let, okay, let, I'll let, let you finish. finish. I got, I got, a, I got a good rebuttal for this one, so, go no, ahead. No, 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 but when, when, when the Fed speaks, right, when uh -huh. the leader speaks, his, your words, are, the leader's words are interpreted. So the leader might say something, but the the the, chair, the, when, the when the president speaks, no matter what president it is, the media spends about five hours interpreting a five-minute speech. No matter what president, whether it was Bush or whether it was a, you know it was uh, Barack, you know, uh, they spend time interpreting what he says. If somebody important speaks, whether it be the CEO, uh, the chairman of the feds. Uh, you know the, the the leader of the of the of the Catholic Church, no perverts. Uh, <laughs> people spend hours dissecting what they say. So even though his exact words might mean something else, and these are where the political scientists and the you know the 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 the, 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 the journalists come into play. Even though his physical words might be with an explanation, he, he's good about saying something controversial and then explaining it. I give him that. You know, he, even though his physical words might not be what people interpret them as, people eventually go and interpret it as that. And that's the problem. Okay. So, so, so now you can make your point. Yeah, let me make my rebuttal here. So, as you know, I've, I'm pretty sure I've told you this before, you know, before I started, you know, working where I work now, um, you know, I worked at a small company and the co-owners of that company were both Syrian, right? So they're both Syrian. They both fled Syria. They both left Syria, you know, to come to America, right, for a better life. So reasons they fled, they left Syria was, you know, the government, you know, repressive government, uh, theocracy, right? Even though Syria is secular, you know, there's still a lot of religious stuff, you know, that dictates law, stuff like that. Um, but the people over there, you know, it's like 40 or higher percent of all births and marriages are inbred. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm, that, is, that is an absolute fact, right? Dude. Studies have shown that people that are inbred tend to be a better country. Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Where did you get that study from? History. You know, the studies show that, you know, <laughs> when, when you have a child that is inbred, they are going to be two, at least two standard deviations lower IQ level. Right? Not to mention all the birth defects that come with that. What are you talking about? The prince, Prince Charles, is one of the most handsomest guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, smashingly handsome, remarkably um, stunning. So I don't know what's 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 wrong, what's wrong with being an inbred. <laughs> when when you're closely when you're closely related family members <laughs> marry, it just causes all kinds of problems, genetic genetic problems. Okay. So yeah, okay. Now we're getting so off topic here, but I but I gotta make this one point. But I gotta make this one point. Um, England is the largest, uh, the largest uh, before not too recently, but they're the largest uh, colon colonial power in the world. Mm -hmm. We speak English, mm -hmm. right? We're speaking it right now. You know what they were doing? They were, but the leader of the England nation, not the president, but the you know the monarchy. They are, they are, um, they're, they're, they're inbreds. All they do is fucking each other, right? And uh, they, they're ruling the world for a little bit. Anything, <laughs> for, I mean, but <laughs> I'm just saying that's what they're doing. They're, they're, uh, they're fucking each other, and they're ruling the world. They're, I mean, there's no argument for that. <laughs> So, I mean, you have, you yeah, have, but it, you have but it wasn't continuously. 
Yeah, I, I mean, you're, Prince Charles fucked his cousin, and now we have a we have a young prince. I mean, you you just can't argue that. <laughs> there is there's no argument you can put forward to contradict that. And if anybody's listening right now, if you find a better argument, put it in the comment uh, field. <laughs> but anyways, back Charles. back to my point. All right. Um, you know, most of the people that most of the smart people in the Middle East have already left the Middle East, right? They have come. They have come to America, or they went to Europe, right, to leave. Now, why did why did they do that? Why 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 did they leave their host country? Because the the country was bad, right? Why did they come Why did they come to America? Because it's a better society, right? So we won in the realm of ideas. So they came here. Right? They don't want America to be like Syria. They don't want America to be like Saudi Arabia. So when 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 people say, you know, oh, you know, he's offending Muslims right now, that's not necessarily a true statement. Because the, the people that I know know that there are really not necessarily bad people, but when you have an IQ of 70 or 65 and you're not going to be able to keep up in this type of economy, you're not going to be able to compete in this type of economy. And when they bring busloads of peop those people over, and even you know, this is this is the problem with you know mass illegal immigration too. When they come over, they're going to have to be on government assistance, right? Because they're they're just not going to be able to, because they're not going to speak the language, they're not going to fit in with the culture, right? They're not going to be educated, so they're not going to be able to compete. So they're going to have to be on government assistance. Now their children may eventually, they may not even be the first generation, maybe the second generation. But their children, you know, eventually may be able to compete, you know, in this society. But those immigrants when they first get over here are not, so they're going to have to be on government assistance. So when it comes time to vote... They're going to vote for the party that is offering them more free stuff and assistance. That's just what's, that's just what they're going to do, right? Because they, they either don't know or they're not, they don't have the critical thinking skills to think long-term instead of short-term. They're not thinking, oh, well, if I vote for more taxes or if I vote for more Medicare, then... You know, one day when I make more money, I'm actually going to take home less money because I'm having to give it to, you know, people that are like me right now. That's your argument. That, that's the argument, yes. Uh, you're going to have to elaborate a little bit more because I don't see that as a strong argument. <laughs> I see it as, I, 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 no, no, I'm serious. I, I mean, I see it as the argument. But it's not a strong argument. I mean, Albert Einstein, who um, who ended World War II, was a freaking immigrant. Uh, uh huh. Now, I'm now, a freaking immigrant. Okay. And yes. I'm 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 the, I'm, the, I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. Um, now here, now I, did, I, it, <laughs> now now here, I didn't say that immigration was bad, but when when you have immigration that happens, and those Im immigrants don't assimilate into the culture of the country that they're going to that's when you have problems and that's where the bigger problem comes in man because if they don't assimilate to the country not because I, they don't like what I don't like that doesn't make them any less off individualistic than I am or not individualistic less off of a, of a, of a you know as a person than I am just because you don't like what I don't like just because you don't listen to country music I mean just because you know whatever whatever it might be that doesn't make you different. The challenge is not for me, not for them. If, if 
the challenge is for both of us, right? The, both parties or both both individuals to learn how to live around each other. That's the problem. Now I'm not saying that we should we should let every really nearly crazy person in with a low IQ and not going to have anything to do with the country. That, that, that's not what I'm saying. I actually agree with some of your points. To be honest with you, if you're the brain drain in a country, we want the best of the brain. Yeah. Right. But 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 with, when going back to the original point with Donald Trump, I said, hey, you can't you can't just say, hey, we're gonna you can't you, if you're if you have that idea. Well, I mean, you can you, say that because it's been done. Or I mean, they stopped. You yeah, know. I mean, slavery's been done before. We're no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, saying, I'm saying they've stopped immigration of countries before. They've stopped in immigration, no. you know, and it's actually, you know, it, it's in law that you know a president can make an executive order to stop an immigration of either a country or a uh, race but, of people but, if that there is an existential threat to the country, right? But he, here, but here, here my here's my deal, dude. You can't say you can't use that argument. It's been done before. I mean, there's a lot of things that have been done before. If we don't like, well, the I know, people, but I mean, a lot of people. The the argument that I hear a lot is, you know, that's unconstitutional. Not really. I mean, slavery now is unconstitutional, and it's been done before. Yeah, you know I'm saying you can't you can't rest on that logic. You you had a couple of good points. That's not the point that it's been done before. <laughs> No, it's, I was just saying. I was just saying. There's there's a precedence for it, right? We we've been we've um we've killed a bunch of presidents before. We don't we're not happy with our current president. A lot of people aren't, but we're not going to say, oh, let's just assassinate this one. You know why? Because it's been done before. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's not. I don't want to hear that as an argument, right? I want to hear, hey. Well, here, uh, take take this one then. Like, take this one. Okay, so we are actively at war with the Middle East, right? <laughs> Okay. We we are we are the sole you know almost the sole cause of all their problems. Uh, uh, right. No, you guys are. They they I'm Jamaican. <laughs> they hate us. Right. They hate you. Be, be, they love because me. <laughs> because we've been bombing their nations for decades now. You now, been bombing their nations for decades. How, how much sense does it make to massively import people that you're at war with? Okay, see, <laughs> that's the argument. Not that it's been done before. <laughs> All right? You have to agree with me now. That's the argument I was looking for, dude. So. <laughs> that's the argument, Ryan. Why yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. Or, why would you import people why, that you're at war with? That, yeah, that's the, that's the argument. That's the argument. Now... Here's here's another argument. Why would you get them angrier? Oh well, that's a whole different topic. That's a whole why topic we you, could. Why would you? No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. We need force, but why would you? The ones that are here, that could, Islam is a religion. It's not a country, right? And I, that's I would. A lot of yeah, I mean, it, it's a. Re I think it. I mean, Islam for me, anyways, is like a political system. I mean, it's a religion too, but but it's you know a, uh, you know got its roots and you know it's a political system as well, you know because they have me, law, laws this. like that. Okay, but, I right. mean, which religion? How many, how many, uh, I mean, all pre pre pretty pretty much all religions are political systems in themselves. But oh yeah, raping of the boys, a political system. Yeah, um, <laughs> Catholics. <laughs> okay, all right. How many black people do you know? Uh, I don't know, quite a few. And you talk to on a regular basis. That I talk to on a regular basis. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, you're about you're probably the only one I talk to every day. All right, cool. All right, so that's one, right? How many Muslims do you know? Um, probably around five. You know about five Muslims. Yeah. How many Asians do you know? Ooh, uh, that number, that's man, you. I don't. Probably that you talk to on a regular couple, basis. Maybe a couple. Okay. The whole the whole the whole point is we don't we, we can't just um we can't just say we we these people are brothers and their sisters, right? They they have the right to practice their religion. 
Mm -hmm. Right? They have the right to be who they want to be. Right? Uh, when we speak, even though what we're saying might be for the greater good, we need to watch our tongue. Not, and that, and that's, and that's what I believe it, it's his biggest problem. Oh, tone. Right? You're you're saying his tone. No, his tongue. Yeah. <laughs> his tone and his tongue. Because, and that's what that's what I'm saying. The brand uh, or the so-called you know brand is because the. Uh, it it it, just, it doesn't compute. I mean, you just, you just can't treat people like that. You know, you can't you can't say Mexico is sending us the worst of their people. When I wake up on a Sunday morning and see a whole bunch of people out there hammering nails into a house while everybody else is falling asleep, you can't say these people are lazy people. When all I see on a on a Friday night are a bunch of guys working a construction job on a Friday night, mind you. You, you can't say that. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's like when it comes to stuff like religion and not not, not religion, like um, what what what, what am I calling? Uh, not religion. Like religion and uh, and race relations and you know and immigration and stuff like that. You can't just talk to people like that. But what if you went to work yes tomorrow and your boss said to you, you know what, Ryan, you did a shitty job. <laughs> I would that wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. I'd be like, well, fuck, I need to do something about it. And no matter what you do, you are placed in the shitty job category. But you did a whole bunch of stuff right, but you did that one shit thing wrong. That one shit thing, Ryan. Just the one shit thing, and it keeps on egging at you every day. It's a shit ride. <laughs> that's how these that's how these people feel because they build. Uh, the I don't know. I, I would I would no, talk no. I would I would talk to I would talk to Ruben about it and see how he feels because they're uh, they're yeah, I'll ask Ruben to come on the show. Ruben, yeah, you the, you Ruben need to ask Dominic. Ruben. We need to have Ruben on the show. That's actually a good idea. We need to have Ruben on the show because I know we, plenty we, we, I know we, plenty of you know Hispanic people that actually would like immigration to slow down a lot. Why? Because those because people are, com th yeah. Because those people are compete completely or competing with them and actually driving their wages down lower, right? Okay, all right, all right. So here, 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 here's what I get into now. Here, here, this deal. You're gonna love this. So about 500 years ago, uh, we had a plantation system in America. You know, and I hate to bring up black people, but we had a plantation system in America. And it was based on, you know, people who go out in the field and they work and whatever. And then, the, and then you know, you have those people and then you have house slaves. Now, mm -hmm. now, do you know what a house slave is? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Uncle Tom. I know what you're talking about. Uh, so, if you have a house slave, the house slave is living, in his mind, he's living wonderful. But just like Moses, his people are out there suffering. So you're calling Reuben a house slave? <laughs> I'm calling Reuben a modern day house slave. I'm not saying he's a house slave, but I'm giving <laughs> you the idea of where that's coming from. I'm not, call, I'm not, don't get me wrong, we're not attacking Reuben. That's not what we're doing. I love Reuben. Reuben's a good friend of mine. I talk to him every day. Yeah. I, I talk to Reuben almost, nah, I think mean, probably two or three times a week. Not every day. But it's the idea of the house slave. Remember, we were talking about somebody the other day, and. Well. Okay, I got I got kind of got a rebuttal on that. So, okay, go ahead. I like I like rebuttals. Would, that means yeah. that we're not we're not listening to somebody else's opinion and we're forming our own. Yeah. But we're not one sided so, either. We're not just picking on against, what, we're not just what, picking with hate. What propped slavery up? Right? What propped slavery up? What made slavery possible? Okay, okay slavery was made possible by the betrayal of Regular slave. No, no, no. I, I'm not regular, even. I'm not. Black. I'm not. I'm not going that angle. I'm saying the only thing that made slavery possible uh, and profitable was the government, right? Because the government passed laws to enforce people that didn't even have slaves. If slaves ran away. The government would, you know, hunt them down and bring them back, right? So the government 
made slavery happen. They allowed for slavery to happen. Yeah. Now, and the funny thing is, is in turn, <laughs> politicians have twisted it to make people feel that it's, you know, that the sole culprit in slavery is, you know, southern white rednecks, right? <laughs> right? I mean, southern white, southern white next rednecks government. Yeah. So, <laughs> but in fact, those people probably never even owned slaves because it was only 3% of the population that owned slaves. It was only the super wealthy that owned slaves. Because poor people couldn't afford slaves. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, financially feasible for poor people to own slaves. Now, had the government not been involved in slavery at all, slavery either would not have existed in America or would have died out a lot faster. Because if you didn't have government subsidizing slavery then people would have found a lot faster would have found an alternative like the cotton gin right so people would have found an alternative cheaper way to maintain or you know for their plantations because slaves was not not very uh, very efficient financially it was very expensive I mean, I mean, I mean. Here, here, here's the deal, dude. You have a bunch of. I don't think you're going to blame the government one time to, you know, to, 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 to. Because the government, I mean, you, you can't. That's a much more too simplistic view of it. <laughs> how's it? I don't know how. How's it too simplistic? I mean. I mean, it's not. It's not. How, how I mean, are, obviously. I mean, if you don't have a government, if you don't have a government, who's going to round up slaves? Who's going to round up slaves? Yeah. I mean, the, it, back in those days, the government was a different entity than it is today. <laughs> yeah, it was actually it, it less was. powerful than it is today. Yeah. So, so based <laughs> on that data, you're gonna, you're gonna. No, it was a lot less powerful. That's yeah. how we had. That's how we had the wars and everything. Um, the government was a different entity. It was smaller. You know, the the the, the guys who wrote the thingy constitution stuff. You know, they they wanted a, they intended for a smaller government. We know that. That's why every time we look around, we're like, "What the hell? You're involved in this. You're involved in this. Mm -hmm. You're involved in this." The point is, right, that yeah, they had to write the laws, but it, they they were the primary factor in keeping it, right? The person who again we're doing right now, we're it, it kind of it goes back to the same thing that me and you're talking about. The people with the money are the ones that allow slavery to happen because they had the money. To yeah. either influence the politicians exactly. or do that. Now, I'm not sure why we're talking about this. We're still talking about immigration, right? <laughs> but I'm not sure I'm talking about, you know, dissect. I'm just saying that the ones that are here who don't want to have, who want to deport people, because they, dude, they build your house. <laughs> they build my freaking house. <laughs> my house would be more expensive. <laughs> if if Seuss didn't stop by and say, "Hey, I work for ten dollars an hour and it's blazing heat," yeah, I'm pretty sure John Smith's not going to do that, or Leroy. Leroy uh, got other stuff to do. I don't know, because <laughs> I've Smith I've done I've done some I've done some very very rough terrible jobs. For, right. For, 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 for because that thing? because yeah because yeah, I worked in the I worked in the foundry like where. It, you know, I got burned and explosions and all that kind of shit for freaking twelve fifty an hour, right? So, oh man, minimum minimum <laughs> wage, right? So, I mean, I'm sorry, that's twelve twelve fifty is not minimum wage, bro. No, I know it's not minimum <laughs> wage, but we're talking about the top in the top five deadliest jobs. You know, it's one of the top five most deadly jobs, and I was getting paid twelve fifty. I get paid, I make. Probably more than twice as much when you when I you know you factor in all the commissions and stuff that I make now. Just dealing with cell phones, you know. So I've done the I've done dirty jobs. I I had a job where and this was practically minimum wage, 
where all I did all day was freaking paint, scrape paint out of a out of fifty gallon drum barrels all day long. Okay, so here here here's the question I have to you. But when when people say, well, if we didn't have immigrants, then nobody would do these jobs. I call BS on that. I call no, BS because if the job if the jobs are there, people are going to do those jobs. Because we've got I mean you. We've got like 20, I mean, you, like 10, 15 million people on unemployment or on welfare right now. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do some jobs. The the whole point I'm getting at is that is that they are the primary uh, doers of these jobs, dude. Well, I mean, the, I'm and, not, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that because you know businesses want cheap labor, right? I mean, well, again, and who who allows for the who who allows for the cheap labor? Ding ding ding! The government. Who, no, me and you who want cheap houses. <laughs> well, everybody's gonna want cheaper stuff. I mean, that's just how this is how it works. Everybody's gonna look. Everybody's gonna look for the for the cheapest deal, right? I mean, you can't say that, dude. You can't say everybody's gonna want cheaper stuff and then. And then say government is the one that is allowing cheaper stuff. Like, you can't say that. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't. <laughs> it makes no. It, it makes it makes no. Um, it, it can't stick. Well, if, yeah, if, if it, I, it does I, make sense it, because it, it does make sense because for me and you who are, well, I mean, you're not a citizen yet, but you will be. So for us who are citizens, we when we. Hire. We work for hey, an I, for an empl pay, uh, employer. I pay taxes, dude. Exactly. So we have a <laughs> set of rules that we have a set of rules, and then those employees have a set of employers have a set of rules that they have to follow and regulations that they have to follow for us to have employment, right? So the government makes it more expensive uh, via you know regulations, whatever taxes, blah blah blah. For us to be hired and for us to work, right? And then in turn, they let you know people in that don't have those requirements, and employers aren't needed to follow those requirements. So not only are they allowed to hire them cheaper, you know, it costs them a lot less to employ them, you know, not just based on what they have to pay them. So they make rules, and then they make loopholes for those rules for their for their buddies. That's why I'm saying, you know, that's why I'm saying the government that's the government's fault, right? Because if 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 these people, if you know, immigrants had came in, for the most part they do, but when you have when you're talking illegal immigration, it's a different story. So if they came in and they still had to pay, you know, the same same amount for health insurance and you know same amount for life insurance and you know workman's comp and all this stuff for for these guys then businesses wouldn't be bussing people over from Mexico right they wouldn't be advertising in Mexico for people to come because they're going to they, it's going to cost them the same amount of money to hire a citizen hey you know why we can't be scholars why is that how the fuck are we talking about Mexico? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we got way off onto this tangent. We were supposed to be talking about college. <laughs> All I'm saying, man, like, here's the thing. We do a pretty good job of pointing the finger, right? Giving the finger, not so much. Pointing the finger, hell to the air. We do a pretty hey, good job of doing that. Hey, ask your mom. I give the finger pretty good. Yeah, my dog's right here by the day with your mom, and <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, pretty, pretty good finger, man. Pretty good finger. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, hey, you know, we're a nation of whiners. Uh, you know, whining shall be done, no matter what. Well, I mean, when I say you know the government did this, the government did this. I mean, we, you know, the people voted those people in, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's their Maybe fault. You for, for, well, uh, considering I haven't voted in quite a few years, then no. I haven't, there's nobody Please. that I have deemed worthy enough to vote for. So. Uh, you know what, bullshit. I'm going to call you bullshit on this one. Can you tell me why? You ready for it? What's that? 
You can't not boast. Sure, I can. No one would. Uh, would you let me finish? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <coughs> mm. <laughs> All right, let's hear you, let's hear your point here, Floyd. You can't not vote and say anything bad about the government. Why not? What do you mean, why not? You yeah. ever got something for free before? Uh, I don't know, man. Anytime you hear something free, there's always a catch to it. So it's very rare I that you actually might, get you, something free. Yeah, you ever, you, I mean, you ever, you ever got something for free, seriously? Uh, just gifts. But, I mean, but it's free, right? Mm-hmm. Don't, don't you use it? Sure. Don't you like, don't you enjoy the uses of it? Like, I got the PlayStation for free, it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be honest, I gave love and affection to get it, but, I mean... <laughs> okay, where are, you, where are you going with this, Floyd? I'm just saying, the government, to you, is free, because you did not vote. I don't want to hear bullshit free. from you complaining. <laughs> yes, for, to you, it's free. What do you mean, how's it free? It's free because you you did not t take a part in 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 um in selecting them. You should have, but you didn't. There was uh, no there was nobody there was nobody to vote for. What are you talking about? There's plenty of people to vote for. If you don't no, like vote, if you don't, no, if you no, don't. No, no. Listen, not voting is the, the same political statement as voting. Now don't get me wrong. I don't like, vote him. I'm just saying. Because if I'm, if, you know, if I'm choice to, you know, if my choices are, you know, uh, you know, a bag of shit or a bucket of shit, you know, and I don't want to vote for either, then <laughs> why vote? See what I'm saying? You know, why why vote for the lesser of two evils? Because he's the lesser of two evils. Uh, he seems to be the lesser of two evils. Oftentimes, you know, they're just as bad, if not worse. Gotcha, gotcha. So, oh, like in man. like in the uh, 2012 election, right? Mm -hmm. There was somebody I wanted to vote for very badly. I wanted to vote Ron Ooh. Paul, right? But uh, the Republican, uh, the Republican establishment, did not want Ron Paul to have the nomination whatsoever, right? I, so they made it to where there was no way he could get a nomination, right? They changed. They actually changed rules on the floor to make it so he couldn't get the nomination. Not only that, they constantly had a media blackout on him. They constantly misrepresented his poll numbers. And then they would apologize, you know, on a 3 a.m. show when nobody's watching. <laughs> you know, so why vote? Why vote when the candidate that you want to vote for uh, cannot be part of the process. You know, there are many smart people out there that can argue this eloquently and more and more effectively than I can. But my only response is, if you didn't pay for something, why complain about it? Oh, uh, no, I pay for it. How are you paying for Taxes. it? Taxes. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> there so, are many people out there, again, that are going to say, tap is our way of life. You pay to get paid. I mean, I mean, nobody likes to pay taxes, but what if nobody did? Right? You wouldn't be on the internet right now having a, having a go at PlayStation. Taxes are a necessary evil. That's you, true, PlayStation but... PlayStation wouldn't but, exist. But, uh, what? How would PlayStation <laughs> not exist without... Well, you're not making any sense. <laughs> First of all, PlayStation's Japanese anyway. <laughs> so what? Yeah, but but if you didn't have if you didn't have a if you didn't have um internet, there wouldn't be any PlayStation. I can promise you. There was PlayStation there before was, there, before that. What are you talking about? No, but you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a network, dude. Your network wouldn't be able to do the PlayStation. Right? I played games without a network for many years. No, but Many what I'm saying years. is you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing right now without it. So we wouldn't even be talking about it. So you wouldn't even have anything to complain about. That's what I'm saying. So, you, so you're saying without, without taxes and the government, Internet wouldn't exist. Exactly. Because how, 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 can, how can you possibly know that? What do you mean? 
mean? How could you not like, know that? I don't, how, I don't get how, it. How, could, how can you say that with <laughs> abs- absolute certainty that no one would no one would have invented the internet? Okay, because. There wouldn't be any roads. There wouldn't be any civil war. How would there you know there wouldn't be any great recession? You know, roads were roads were built, you know, before without taxes, right? Yeah, but not this type of roads. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the roads were even built for? They were just war. built, yeah, for war. Right? They weren't they weren't built for the betterment of the the country. They were built for war, for moving troops and moving stuff around. That's what they were really built for. But, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, to say, you know, well, without the government, we wouldn't have roads. Okay. Well, without roads, without the government building roads, we wouldn't have the need for cars. And without cars, you know, the high demand for cars, we wouldn't be polluting the air. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so it's, it's hard to say that, you know, nobody could have done it better. And at the same time, say, hey, we, uh, you know, we're polluting the air with all these vehicles. Well, I mean, without the government building all these roads, we wouldn't have all these vehicles polluting the air, so. I'm just saying, man, you can't complain about the government too much. They've done some crazy stuff. <laughs> they've, they've done some, they've, in mo- for the most part, they've done terrible, ter- terrible things. What are you talking about? They've done wonderful things. <laughs> Somebody gotta. I mean, we need to forget. Without the government, there wouldn't be any regulation. Because here's the deal: when stuff goes wrong, we blame them. When stuff goes right, we're like, "Oh, screw this, free market." <laughs> uh, Look what we did without the government. I'm like, nah. They, I mean, it's a two-edged sword. We can't function without people in charge. We can't. Sure, we can. Without? No, we can't. Let's sure, militia. we can. Let me. We we'll, we'll have. It won't be a very good way. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, without without a government telling you about, hey, you got to pay this person at least six thousand an hour, you would be poor as can be. <laughs> yeah, but why why do we have to pay this person, you know, this much money? Because I mean, because because the cost of living is high. Why is the cost of living high? Because of inflation. Government. Because of inflation. <laughs> Why? Why, the why is inflation high? <laughs> because the government's because. printing money that it doesn't have, right? Why are we printing why, money? Why, 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 we is money? The, why, why is the cost of food high? Why is the cost of food high? No, no. Oh, why be, oh, money oh, that we don't have? oh, because because the government has mandated that we need to use a high fructose corn syrup, which is corn, which is used to feed all kinds of livestock, instead of <laughs> using sugar, right? Because we got to protect those poor corn farmers, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I could go on and on and on and on with examples. <laughs> I know, I know. The only thing you have to, to do is to, is to lock you up in a bunker with a bunch of guns and stuff and say, stay here. <laughs> the government's coming to get you. It's like, lock oh, you up. Shit. Oh, shit. It's a trap, You, you got to have... Uh, some government. I mean, there's no way America wouldn't exist without government. Bottom line. <laughs> but why? Why do we need? Why would we even need a country? Why do we need countries? If we didn't have a government and we didn't have a country, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about how we shouldn't have let we shouldn't let Muslim <laughs> immigrants in because they wouldn't exist. There, there wouldn't be a such thing as an immigrant. We would just freely well, walk around each other. No, we would start complaining, oh, I need a sense of belonging. I need to hang around people like me because <laughs> man is... <laughs> but who tells, I, us, I who tells us that people are different from us? Governments, well, or, governments can... or religion? Both, dude. <laughs> exactly. And they're, uh, they're practically one and the same. What happened in the old days when we had the kings and crap like that? How... Somebody how did how did, king, how did kings get their power, right? They had priests that would tell the people, this guy was chosen by God, and then the king would in turn enforce laws to make the priest relevant. <laughs> That's how the system works. <laughs> so you have people anointing people, and then in turn those anointing people make sure those people that anointed them have a job and have relevancy. <laughs> 
And look what happened. We're sitting here speaking English. I bet, I bet you had no idea how you're speaking English. We tell you how we speak English. This is how it happens. So one. This is how it happens because like, because a, a priest said this king was chosen by God and his bloodline, and we should give him all the power. And let's go over here and take over these other countries because God said those countries need to be this and blah blah blah. And it's just a continual circle. <laughs> because people don't even for the most part people don't even read the damn bible and know what's in it and know that thou shall not kill thou shall not you know steal thou shall not build bear false witness they don't practice none of that what are we talking about you don't practice it either <laughs> hey I haven't murdered anybody I mean, that's just one of the things. That's because somebody <laughs> said, hey, if you do it, we're just going to lock you up. And then you go in there and you're going to get sodomized. And <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, it's, all you got to do is go, go in some sort of a... Um, go in some... Let's go lock yourself in some, in some bunker, dude. Prepare for doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, you know, it's hilarious. I just got an email from freaking University of Phoenix um, about College of Humanities. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read that stuff. I, I can read a book. I don't need somebody to tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, if I want to study humanities, I can do that on my own. I don't need to pay, you know. 30, 40, 50 grand for a degree in it. <sighs> Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. Oh, uh, this was, this was a, somebody putting a flyer in for turf and pest control. <laughs> Sorry, I already, already, have pe here. already have pest control. Well, I think, yeah, I, think I, we, I think we rambled on a lot, a lot longer than we planned on there, Floyd. Well, I don't know about you, but I had some good info. <laughs> uh, and then you sent me on a uh, on a government and religion <laughs> rage here at the end. Even though You're I don't run, I don't I don't really have anything against religion, right? Because you know I've been baptized <laughs> and all that other stuff. Okay, but, so why the hell uh, the amount of mom jokes and fuck you and suck whatever and you say <laughs> you, you <laughs> I don't want to hear you been baptized. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I have. I'm just, I'm just telling you what, what, what happened. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was say you, yeah, but, uh, some of the most biggest hypocritical religious people out I, there. I, like, I'm not hypocritical about it. I don't tell any, anybody how to live their lives. I don't tell like anybody. That. I don't tell anybody how they should live their lives. <laughs> I never once say that. Uh, you know, I know exactly how you should live your life. Blah blah blah. I don't do any of that crap. All I, all, all I say is nobody can determine what's best for you or how to live your life than yourself. Nobody else can do that for you. Next time we should uh, talk about politics and religion. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can do a whole show about that. That sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I think we should go ahead and end it here because we've had probably a two-hour live stream, more than likely. Seems like it's been about two hours. Maybe it's only been about an hour and a half, but that's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of lot of video there. I felt right, like. Man. Uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, man. all right, I'll see you on the next show. I don't know what we're gonna do about it yet, but we'll figure it out. I'm sure there's something coming else coming up in the news. Maybe next time we, we might stay. On, maybe next time we might uh, stay on topic. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, next show, let's let's make the next one a fun one. Let's do a fun show. I don't, but I have plenty of fun talking about your mama. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, me and your mom's together. We don't we don't do much talking, man. Yeah, I know. All you're doing is is um just hanging out. And hey, man. Like you're a beach. She know if there's one thing your mom knows, it's Jamaican jerk. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 
Oh, shit. All right, man. Well, I will yak at you later. <laughs> yeah, later, dude. I'll, I'll, see, I'll mm -hmm. see you at work. <laughs> All right, man. Talk to you later. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for anybody that was watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next show.